Today's video is a bit different. So I'm taking a small break from working on the boat myself and I'm currently on the Spanish island of Mallorca. I'm in the town of Santa Ponza and behind me all the way over there is a Silent 60 solar yacht by Silent Yachts. So let's get on board. You can see Leo and Ellie in the background. And right now, we're finally aboard the Silent 60. I've seen plenty of walkthroughs uh, through this boat already on YouTube. I'll put some in the description if you want a general intro. What I'll do today is more of a tech deep dive. So I want to look at instruments, I want to be in the machine room um, to, to check out the electric motors, to check out um, inverters, solar system, and we'll deep dive a bit and get a bit nerdy. Let's go. The Silent 60 is, as you would think, a 59-foot yacht. It's primarily battery electric, but also sports a large diesel generator. It's priced between 2 million and 3 million euros, depending on which battery, motor size and extras you choose. Uh, with a beam of 9 meters, that's about uh, 30 feet, it's remarkably wide for, uh, for a 60-foot yacht, uh, even as a catamaran. At 29 tons of displacement and less than a meter, or about 3 feet of draft, you can take it into most uh, shallower waterways in Europe as well. And since it's CEA certified, it's ready for any blue water mission or even circumnavigation if you're willing to take that on. Nico, the owner of Silent Dreams, was so gracious to let me board to actually experience the big inspiration for my boat project up close and personal. So let's get to it. I'll follow the energy over the course of this video series. So I'll start with the solar array and the generator, then show the charger and inverter setup, batteries and motors. Lastly, electrical consumers like instruments, sensors and finally also the kite controller. One fairly important thing about a solar boat, as you might imagine, is solar panels. So, what we have is a few rear panels, so these are Maxion, then quite a bit of panels up front here, also Maxion. And then the roof of a flybridge has these flexible Solbium panels. The front array consists of 24 Maxion 3 solar panels. Those are the standard panels that are also used in residential installations. They supply 9.6 kilowatt peak, so more than half of a total solar capacity. Things get interesting with the 12 flexible Solbian panels on the roof of a flybridge. First of all, these are clearly not the panels that are shown in all the promo shots and in the product images you can see on the website and in the beginning of this video. Furthermore, these panels are not currently sold by Solbian as such. They're 6x9 cells, so one cell longer than the maximum one you can get. This should result in 279 watt peak per uh, panel, so 3.3 kilowatt peak in total. The reason they're using flex panels, as far as I can tell, is to reduce weight and therefore load on the folding mechanism that the flybridge sports in order to fit through smaller bridges. The stern panel is much more straightforward, sporting six of the same Maxion panels for 2.4 kilowatt peak of additional solar capacity. That, in my calculation, brings the total to 15.35 kilowatt peak of solar, 
and not the 17 kilowatt peak we're currently advertising. But then again, the one I've been on was hull number one, so a couple things may have changed since then. Now that we've seen where the energy goes in, let's see where it goes next. The machine room of this boat definitely looks different than it would in a typical uh, combustion engine driven boat. Having more tech and especially more blue Victron stuff and less of a chunky diesel engine. What came as a bit of a surprise to me was that almost anything you can see in the machine room runs on 24 volt. There's no HV inverter um, as such. So you can see three of the Victron Quattro 24 uh, inverters and chargers, as well as seven MPPT trackers that can run on 12, 24 or 48 volts, but obviously run on 24 volts with the Quattro units. Which means the solar array charges a 24 volt battery bank only and not the HV main traction battery. Alternatively, you can charge the battery using the diesel generator, which isn't quite as clean, but a good life insurance policy if you're going transatlantic. It's covered by this nice shiny cover, as well as a sound shield to make this silent yacht worth its name. It's a Volvo Penta D3 220 unit with an output of 150 kilowatt. So both the solar array with the Victron units and the generator are made for one thing and that is charging the batteries. Those are located underneath the deck floor in the main living area. First thing to notice is that there is a fire suppression system, which I would love to see in action against a lithium fire of that size, but I guess it's better than not having one, huh? Since only this one hatch was accessible during my tour, I was able to find 23 of the 4.8 kilowatt hour battery banks made by MG. Although MG offers these batteries in the somewhat safer lithium iron phosphate um, variety. These are the HV, so standard lithium ion and therefore denser battery packs. The total battery capacity on the boat I was on was 210 kilowatt hours. That includes two of these 4.8 kilowatt hour batteries that are not in series with the others but actually stay at 24 volts, supply all the instruments and are charged directly by the solar array. Below the Victron units on the left side here you see the red Bruiser BSC614 bidirectional DC-DC converters that go both ways between 24 and 400 volt. That can easily be seen in the cockpit, where the Victron unit shows a pretty large DC load from the DC-DC converter, where the 24 volt from the hotel battery gets converted into 400 volt and um, therefore shows in the MG control unit. I'll make a list of all the components I can find online and put some links in the description below, so make sure to check that out. In the remaining one or two videos in this series, I'll talk about the motor and the Python drive, go into the instrument panel and the instrument panel up top and the flybridge, of course. I'll talk about water treatment, water maker, as well as uh, water systems in general, where everything goes, the water tanks below the cabins, the air conditioning uh, unit as well as the air conditioning controls, the actuators that lift the flybridge, then obviously lots and lots of sensors all over the boat, the of course electric tender boat, the kite system to pull you and a lot of other things. So stay tuned, make sure to subscribe and leave me a thumbs up and see you next time.